With the 17 millimeter combination wrench completed, I thought I'd just go ahead and add an extra chapter on my workflow for 3D printing it. Regardless of what you create in Tinkercad, you're going to take and export the geometry as either an STL file or an OBJ file. I typically use STL, especially for the simpler stuff. And then you're going to get the usual, what do you want to call it and where do you want to save it. So I'm just going to label it 17 millimeter combination wrench and save it in a place that I can find it. Doesn't matter what the name is, doesn't matter where you save it, just matters that you can find it. I use Prusa Slicer for slicing up my 3D models, whether they come out of SketchUp or Tinkercad or you know whatever 3D modeling program I'm using. You might be using Cura, you might be using Simplify 3D, you might be using the proprietary software that came with your 3D printer. But the things I'm going to be discussing are pretty much the same universally. So I'm going to go ahead and import my 17 millimeter combination wrench. And there it is. Now my camera for recording and viewing my 3D printer as it progresses is up here on the right. So I'm going to go ahead and just rotate my wrench. Doesn't affect the printing, but it does make it a little easier to see what's going on with my camera. Under my print settings right now I'm going to be printing at dot one zero millimeter layer heights. That's slower but it gives me more detail. But if you want to print at 0.30, I'm not going to make a make a big difference in the quality. So for my filament, I've got it set to PLA, and I'll get into the weeds there in just a second. And then I want to make sure that I've got supports on the bill plate only, because this part of the wrench handle and this end over here are floating so they're going to need some supports. The amount of infill that you select I've got it set to 50% because I want this wrench to be a little bit stronger than if I had say an infill of 15% and so that only means I'm going to use a little bit more filament and this can take a little bit longer to print. Up under my print settings I'm going to go ahead and bump this up to three perimeters and when we slice it you'll see what that's all about. My infill, like I said, I've got it set to 50%. You can choose the pattern that you want. I'm not sure that it really matters in this particular case. However, one of the things that is new about Prusa Slicer is that I can turn on what's called ironing. And what that does is that it takes that hot extruder tip and drags it across the top surface to iron it and make it smooth so that you don't see the individual lines of filament. I wish it could iron the bottom surfaces but we're not there yet maybe next year skirt and brim I don't need either um, speed sport material that's all good under filament settings I've got my temperatures dialed in of course those will vary with uh, with whatever you do so let's go ahead and slice this now And this is going to take two and a half hours to print, which is fine. Now, I'm going to go back and do something different and something that you might want to do. Something that maybe you thought that you couldn't do with your slicing software. This is a 17 millimeter wrench. That means that from this face right here to this face over here is 17 millimeters. But what if I wanted to make a 20 millimeter wrench? Well, I can do that. I don't need to go back to Tinkercad and model a brand new wrench. I just need to scale it up. So I'm going to grab this wrench. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it. And then this copy over here, I'm going to scale it up. You'll see down here in my slicing software, I have the opportunity to scale it. Right now, they're both at 100%. So what do I have to do to get to 20 millimeters? Well, that's going to require a little bit of the new math. So I'm going to open up my calculator here. And I'm going to take and say, well, what is the ratio from 20 divided by 17? In other words, what is 20 seventeenths in a decimal form? So when I calculate that, I come up with 1.1764 on and on and on. 
Now we don't need too many decimal places, but how do you convert a decimal into a percent? Well, you move the decimal point over two places. So that would be 117.64. So I come down here under my scale factors and type in 117.64. And since my scaling is locked in all three axes, when I hit enter, I now have a 20 millimeter combination wrench without doing really any extra modeling. So let's go ahead and slice those. And that looks pretty good. So that bumped our print time up to about six hours, which is just fine because we're printing a lot of detail in here. But let's get a little deeper into the weeds and see if we have any possible issues. I'm pretty confident that the open end wrench and the closed end wrench are going to be just fine. But as I come down and slice through here and come through the layers, I want to make sure that everything's okay. So up here in the top left corner, Prusa Slicer gives me a color-coded index of what the different layers of filament are. And what we need to really look at here is to see if there are any deviations or any places where we don't have the resolution that we want. Now, when we come into this part right here between the letter T and the letter L, you can see that it merged those two together. And the reason why is that my 3D printer extrudes filament with a tip that is 0 0.40 millimeters. And so that is represented right here by this by this thickness and I can't get a tighter resolution than that without changing the extruder tip. I mean I do have an extruder tip that is 0.25 millimeters but for this particular project it's going to be fine. But it is important to take and slice through your different layers to see what is going on so that you can make sure that your final product is what you want it to be. So let's go ahead and export that G-code. So again, doesn't matter what you call it or where you put it, as long as you can find it. So with that completed, I'm now going to go to Octoprint, which is my interface for 3D printing. If you don't have this, that's fine. Just go ahead and take that G-code, put it on your SD card, plug it in the printer, and go ahead and print. But I just thought I'd show you this as well. So I'm going to go ahead and upload that file. There is my G code. So with that uploaded, I'm going to go ahead and start the print command. And here the first tab shows me the temperature rising. So I've set my extruder for 215 degrees centigrade and right now you can see it ramping up to that goal and the bed temperature is set to 60 and that is also ramping up towards that goal. Here's my control tab so this is the camera that I mentioned on the left if I double click on it I can get a full screen view. Double click again and it brings it back to that. So I'm Okay, so we just have a few more degrees to go, so let's go ahead and jump to our control. Now double click. As soon as the extruder and the bed have warmed up to the temperatures I specified, the print head is going to measure nine different spots on the printer bed and then create a virtual level bed. No bed is perfectly level, and so this goes ahead and adjusts for any discrepancies. Looks like I left a little bit of filament uh, on the tip there, but that'll be okay. So there's the first three. My printer will actually do 49 different points. Found that nine is sufficient and uh, never had any problem. So here's the wipe that just cleans anything off. And then I make a skirt. Skirt doesn't really help with anything, but I just take my finger and wipe on the skirt to uh, make sure that I've got good adhesion. So let's go ahead and watch her print.
Okay, so here's the finished product. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. Got some cleaning up to do, of course. Um, this part of the skirt right here, remember I was talking earlier about how I would take and um, when the skirt is first getting laid down, I'd go ahead and just kind of try to rub it off with my finger, not my fingernail, but just my finger. And if that comes loose, then I just go ahead and stop the print right there because if the skirt isn't going to adhere, the whole wrench isn't going to. Um, satisfied with the lettering. Um, that turned out pretty good. He, I'm not sure if you can see here, but this, um, this ironing, this is really nice. And since it's a new feature, and I do believe I can iron the top and the bottom, I found that setting after I went ahead and uh, started this print, so I'll be playing around with that some. One little thing that I noticed that I'll mention here is that this tip of the wrench right here lifted just a little bit and that's probably because I left the doors of the printer open inside my enclosure or had the cooling fan set too high and so as the filament started to shrink it can lift from the print bed. Otherwise um, looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and check our measurements here. If you don't have one of these guys and you're going to do a lot of 3D printing you should get one. You can get them I don't know, I think I paid $30 at Home Depot for this one, but you can get essentially the same thing online or at Harbor Freight for about 20 bucks. And it doesn't need to be super accurate. I've got it set for millimeters, and this jaw here was supposed to be 17, and we have 16.87. So um, we are 13 one hundredths of a millimeter too small, although. Well, actually, if I get it in here and make sure that the jaws are nice and parallel with the wrench, yeah, I get about 13 point, excuse me, 16.90. Now, I was expecting that here because that's the way I modeled this. This is the one we scaled up using uh, simply the slicing software, and we scaled it up to be 20, and we have 19.84 millimeters. So again, for 3D printing work, um, that's, a, that's a real nice level of precision. And uh, again, I mean, I didn't have to model anything new. I could make as many of these as I wanted, make a whole set, um, even make uh, custom sizes here. So hope you enjoyed that. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know.